Well, hello, friends. It's Pearl of Wisdom here, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And uh, I'm part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. All sports, all the teams from every sport, all the time. We talk about everything. I'm the hockey, one of the hockey guys. I'm going to talk about hockey. I'm just so happens I'll be talking about the Flyers today. Um, the uh, the Flyers have come out, Philadelphia Flyers have come out and said that they have talked to Mr. Voracek, and both of them, and we'll get into it because I'm going to look at an article here, have come to an agreement that Voracek may be traded or could be picked in the expansion draft. It's an interesting article. We're going to go into it and see where what exactly the Philadelphia Flyers are doing here and try to kind of read in between the lines of what we would do if we were Ron Francis with all this information that's been handed out. By the way, if you enjoy this fine programming, hit the like and the subscribe, and I'll send you a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace right to your door via Perlocopter. Yes, Hernandez or Melissa will get in there, off, will go off to the Perlocopter, as my friend Sasha says, who is on my show that I do five days a week, uh, now doing evenings, Tuesday and Thursday. It's called the NHL Pearls of Wisdom show right there, doing between 5.30 and 7.30 Eastern in the evenings, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between... 1 and 3 Mountain. Sorry, 5.30 and 7.30 Mountain. 1 and 3 Mountain. Anyways, check it out. It's a lot of fun. It's interactive, just like Sasha and everybody. We get on there and we talk. If you're a hockey geek, if you're a hockey nerd, you're going to love it. You can also follow me at Pearls of Wisdom, NHLPOW. Okay, let's get into this article about what's, what's Philadelphia trying to do here. I feel like there might be a little bit of pulling, trying to pull the wool under some people's eyes here, specifically Ron Francis of the Seattle Kraken management, uh, who may be picking one of these fine people, uh, players that they are going to be exposing. So we'll go into window capture. All right, we have... The Flyers to expose Jacob Borachek in the NHL expansion draft. Uh, The Philadelphia Flyers and well-known franchise Jacob Borachek are in for an interesting offseason. The two sides are at crossroads, with the Flyers hoping to improve and return to the playoffs, but with limited space or cap to do so. They've been talked about about going looking at Jones, who, by the way, Seth Jones from Columbus, who, by the way, those talks seem to have tailed off. It doesn't seem that Jones is willing to sign a long term. So we'll see what happens there. The team currently has 14 players signed to one way contracts for next season. But at a cost of $64.78 million, leaving them with just $16.72 million to add nine more players to the roster. That's a pretty daunting task. If you, uh, you only have $60 million to sign nine more players. Now, some of those will be league minimum guys and stuff like that, and they probably could fill the roster. But if you're looking for Phil- the Philadelphia Flyers, I've been talked about for a long time. I'm a sort of a Philadelphia Flyers fan. Um, they are looking to get a shooter, and looking to improve their defense after Niskanen left last year to retirement. It was very difficult for them with their young roster that they have of, of uh, defensemen. And uh, to give some support to Carter Hart, who obviously had a very difficult time last year as well. That's pretty hard to do at $16.72 million on the cap. So Vortex production has been strong. But it has been declining. Of course, he's 32 years old now. Uh, is not bitter, as both sides agree that a change of scenery could be best in the best interests of both. In order to bring about that separation, the Flyers are not are 
in a position to give Voracek away. It says not in position, but it made a mistake. Friedman writes that the veteran has been informed that he will be exposed in the upcoming NHL expansion draft, giving the Seattle Kraken his first chance to add the former All-Star. With the forwards worthy of attention or for protection, including Borachek, and only a maximum of seven protection slots up front, Philadelphia will have some tough decisions to make. Borachek has been confirmed to be one of them. So we know that Borachek will be exposed for Seattle. Now the question is, will Seattle go and grab Voracek of and his 8.35. So this is really what I was getting into here. I've had some pretty big discussions. One with a very good friend of mine who is awesome. You might want to check him out. Off the wall hockey, John. He did a video and he seems that he seems to think that the uh, Seattle franchise will definitely take Voracek because he could be their best player that they have. Um, and Dave Haxtell, of course, former Flyers head coach, uh, would love to bring back his former star. That's what it says here, too. Why do they assume that Hextall would love to bring back his former star? It's possible they didn't get along very well. Voracek is a pretty uh, opinionated dude, it appears. Um, it's possible he may not mind it, but to say that automatically that they would love to add him... I'm not so sure about that. Uh, the Kraken will have other options, such as Van Riemsdyk and, uh, of course, Nack, uh, Kubel, and uh, a bunch, a few other players that will be available. Um, and the question now is, if I'm the Seattle Kraken, it, 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 oh, and it also goes on to say that if if Borachek is not picked, they will then look at other options. At, of trading and maybe you know possibly he could end up being back there next year and that's what I really wanted to get into here they this is Philadelphia basically telling Seattle look we are not opposed to anything here you can take them or not take them we'll try to trade them but you know, we're not afraid to bring him back next year. The question really is, is that true? They, we just talked about how they have nine, nine spots to fill at 16 million with $16 million. And they can do that. But this is a team that missed the playoffs last year and are looking to improve, especially, um, as far as the goal, as far as goal scoring is concerned, and another defenseman, because they defensively were terrible last year, are they really going to be okay? If you're going to be okay with having Voracek next year, would you really just put him out there to give him away for free? How is that okay? That doesn't sound okay to me. That sounds like please take this guy to me. And if I'm Seattle, I'm going, I know you want me to take it. And the other thing that um, off the wall John brought up was that he, they got to reach the cap floor. Okay, the cap floor is $60.2 million. Seattle, I think, is probably looking to hit that, $60.2. They, this, this Seattle team is not looking to be making the playoffs next year, I don't believe. It's not the way Ron Francis has shown to work in the past. It's not the type of general manager he has shown to be. He's been a, shown to be a very patient builder. So they all, at $60.2 million, they have to have 20 contracts, 20 players under contract that reach $60.2 million. That's that's the expansion rule for that. That is only $3 million per player. So there's lots of options out there to get, say, another $8 million. They could go to Nashville, take Ryan Johansson, who is a center, is only 28 years old, and yes, he's got a few more years left, 
but he has shown that he can play that role. Borachek does as well, but he's 32 years old, and he's got three more years left, and he's declining. You see? So you pull that $8 million contract, one of those $8 million contracts out, say Johansson, if they decide to go that way and don't get anything in return for that. Um, they could also, there's lots of players out there that they could go to teams and say, hey, you give me a, you give me a draft pick, we'll take Louis Erickson from Vancouver. Vancouver is not offering all that much to take. So instead of buying Louis Erickson out, give us a pick, a second or third. We'll take Louis Erickson. He's on our books. That gets us closer to the cap. There's lots of options out there. It appears to me that what Philadelphia is trying to do is, is push the envelope with Seattle to just take Borachek and not give up anything in return. I don't think it's going to work. If you're going to take anybody in this situation, you take Van Riemsdyk at $6 million. He was really their leading scorer last year. If you're not going to take anything in return for that, or, and, and even with Van Riemsdyk, I would probably leave him on the table unless you're willing to pony up a pick. Because you can still get Knack, Obey Kubel, who's a pretty decent player and young, off of this team. So pony up the pick, Philadelphia. Quit playing games. It just seems like they're playing games here. That's what it seems like to me. Um, I could be wrong. I'm, I mean, it's, it seems like weird games because it's what's going to happen is going to happen with Seattle. I don't think that Ron Francis is hearing this going, okay, we better take Voracek because, yeah, they're obviously not going to take the pick for us and we're going to take Voracek. No, I don't think so. I wouldn't. Anyways, if it's me, I'm going to take Obel unless – there is at least a second round pick offered for Voracek. I originally thought maybe it was going to cost him a first, but it's possible it may be a second. Now, the more I the more I think about it, there may be some motivation because of Hackstall to have a guy from Philadelphia like that uh, that he knows. Maybe he you know he knows how he works or whatever the case may be. But I think. I think right now it's probable that it's between a first or second round pick. And that might be what this is all about. Philadelphia knows they're giving up a pick in this situation. The, the question really is, is it going to be a um, first or a second or what type of pick is it going to be? So that's what I think is going to happen there. Um, I'm going to be talking about Minnesota here right away. We will... Uh, be looking at the buyouts that happened, how that affects Minnesota Wild, the Minnesota Wild, where they are probably going from here. Uh, I personally, well, we'll take a look at it when we take a look at it. Until then, hit the subscribe and the bell. Thanks for coming out. I'd love to see you in my live show from uh, today from 1 to 3 Mountain. That's 3 to 5 Eastern. Come enjoy the frolic. Love to have you. Okay, bye.